proud supporters of Africa this week. Engine. With us, you are number one. Gauteng Tourism Summer 2011 got underway in Johannesburg this week. Gauteng is the most visited province in the country as it's traditionally been the primary point of entry for international visitors. But the problem is most visitors don't stay for very long. Samantha Loring spoke to Kledani Mahlango, MEC for Economic Development in Gauteng. We've got the um, um, most iconic places in our province. We've got a constitution hill located uh, in Gauteng, particularly around Yuvel, um, a hill pro. We've got the apartheid museum. It does not exist anywhere else in the, in the country. And it's very important for tourists to understand where we've been, where we come from as a nation. And that apartheid museum is simply about representing the history of uh, not, not in totality. We also have um, the Hector Pistacin, which was a, the, the resembling the struggle of young people in 1976 when they took, took on the apartheid system, is existing nowhere else in the country but in Gauteng. We've got a cradle for humankind, when, which were many fossils, uh, particularly Stelkfontein fossils were discovered. That simply straddles to, to many million years ago. And then of course, uh, most importantly, recently, we've added the, um, the, the Game 5 that is going to be located uh, to the northeast of Twane, and, and that is going to be open in September. I think uh, the, the part of the things that we're adding into our tourism product is a history of different communities because uh, I believe that we are a truly diverse um, a country and particularly Gauteng as a province are very diverse and our constitution talks to those issues. Uh, this diversity must be represented by the different communities. The Italians were here after the Second World War as a prisoners um, of war and, and they, they are, they, their importance and, and their location uh, into the uh, the step for the, the uh, the zonal water in and around Kalinen, uh, that must also be brought into this. And then the role of Italian community in South Africa when the face came here, as well as the Jewish, Jewish community in Johannesburg, the Jewish community cele celebrated about three, four years ago, 120 years of their existence uh, in Johannesburg. So, so there's many, many other things. So you're focusing on the cultural diversity that we have in the province. When it comes to what tourism contributes to uh, the GDP of the province so far, do you have any idea of you know how large it is at this stage at this stage the, the gdp of the province is around 645 billion that was in 2010 and do you have any targets in terms of revenue generation we don't have target per se but what the work we are doing simply suggests that if we really continue to be uh, vigorous and continue to do the right things in just addressing the challenges faced by the industry we can uh, contribute uh, more than five percent of the gdp in, into this thing of course uh, this needs to be quantified in terms of the rent value and all of those but if you look at the money and um, using the 2010 figures um, and studies that says uh, out of the 90 billion rents that was uh, generated by people who came in and out of the country during the, 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 the month or the, the, the 45 days uh, just uh, during during and after the World Cup a uh, 30 percent of that uh, stayed in Gauteng it really shows that whatever the contribution of South Africa of Gauteng to the um, the broader space and um, uh, tourism contributed as I said significantly to that so one of the things that are really we really need to try and take to the next level besides the cultural tourism how Gauteng is a very one of those vibrant um, provinces in terms of leisure around the uh, Hotel, decent hotels. We've got the more hotel uh, accommodations than any other province in, in in the country. And then the restaurants. We've got we, we we pride ourselves with many many restaurants of high caliber uh, in the province. And therefore. Uh, even in terms of entertainment, a lot of entertainment work, even, as well as well as um, the, the, the the presence of the um, the so-called um, celebrities, there they've got the highest concentration in Gauteng. So, if we had to do a SWOT analysis of the tourism sector in the Gauteng province, where would you say are the weakest spots? I think the weak spot is that Gauteng, as um, during a holidays, they go away somewhere else. They don't see themselves to, to tour the province. Very few people know about State Fontaine who resides in Gauteng. Very few people uh, in Gauteng have been to the Apartheid Museum. Very few people have been to, um, uh, to, 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 to the Marubing and, and to so the different parts of this thing. what is it going to take to get Gauteng? Is what's the strategy to get Gauteng as traveling and um, enjoying what the province has to offer? Uh, we really have to promote the province and show people, showcase what we have. That's very important. Number two, we also have to, as 
incentivize people. Um, if the entrance at Marubing is five, is ten rands, and people are coming with the family, you must be able to incentivize people when they come as groups and as families, so that they can indeed um, take up those offers. But also, we've got to uh, make sure that um, the quality of services improve for the better. That um, when I walk into a restaurant, I'm going to eat the best meal because uh, uh, there's good food in Gauteng. And lastly, South Africa is in the running to host the construction of the world's most powerful radio telescope. The Square Kilometre Array is expected to cost about 1.5 billion euro. Dr. Bernie van Arof, director of the Square Kilometre Array project, explained its economic significance. It will be the world's largest telescope. Yeah. It's a radio telescope, so it picks up radio waves from the universe. And it will be powerful enough to see right back to before the very first stars formed in the universe 14,000 million years ago. I mean, other than something that maybe astronomers are fascinated about, why is this of any use to my life, to the rest of South Africa? Well, the science it does is very exciting. So it attracts young people into science and into engineering. And it also attracts some of the best researchers internationally to either work in South Africa or collaborate with our universities. Mm -hmm. Technologically, astronomers are always pushing the boundaries of technology. They want to see things which are very faint and very far away, so they push the boundaries of technology. So we're developing a group of young people who've got very high-level, world-class skills in technologies which are not only for astronomy, they're also very important for the future of this country and the world. So things like wireless technology, right. very fast computing and so on. All right, and to that extent then, uh, that's how it's relevant to the broader economy at large? Yes, also that it has a potential to help to change the image of Africa, the way people perceive Africa. Mm -hmm. Most people don't perceive Africa as a place where you do very high level science and technology. And we want to help develop a vision of South Africa in particular, but Africa in general, as being a place where you can do those things. Some people would argue, you know what, South Africa at the moment's got pressing social needs. There's poverty issues, there are educational issues, healthcare issues, housing issues. This would just be a very lofty uh, project to pursue, particularly at a cost of 1.5 billion euro. We need to get our priorities straight, and this doesn't seem like a priority. Well, first of all, 1.5 billion euros won't come from us. It will come from an international consortium. There are already nine countries signed up and another five or six have, intent, have stated that they want to sign up. So most of the money would be coming from other countries. Secondly, as you correctly say, we have immense problems of poverty and inequality which we have to deal with. But we also need a longer term vision for where we're going. There are lots of new industries developing in the world, a lot of them around ITC. Those are going to be dominant in world trade. We can make a choice. We can either marginalize ourselves from that future global economy or we can develop the skills and the capabilities right. that we can play in that economy and play a leading role in that economy. Well effectively it's a contest right now between South Africa and Australia. What does South Africa have to leverage? What have we already done to demonstrate capacity? We certainly have the will but what do we have as the building blocks? We've got a very good site. It's far away from people which is what you want but it's got good infrastructure the cost structures are very good to build in South Africa and in Africa. We built the first part of the Meerkat telescope. That's a smaller version of the square kilometre array. And we did that for a number of reasons. We wanted to build up a program where we could attract young people. And we've given out since 2005 nearly 300 bursaries, uh, many of them from our other African uh, partner countries. So the Meerkat telescope has helped us to change the perception that you can't do this kind of thing in Africa and it's really improved the way people see us. Right. You talk about uh, drawing some human capital from partner countries. Which are those partner countries? Because many would also be asking how would this benefit the rest of the continent and if not the continent, at least the sub-region of southern Africa. We're working with eight other African countries, Namibia, Botswana, Mozambique, Mauritius, Zambia, Madagascar, Kenya and Ghana. Many of the students who've come here as part of our program have gone back to those countries. So for the first time now, you have astronomy being taught in Kenya, in Madagascar, in Mozambique, in Botswana, starting in Ghana and Zambia now. So you bring young people into science and engineering in those countries. 
but it's also an iconic project. It's the world's largest science infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So it raises the profile of science and technology as an issue in the development of Africa. Science and technology are an issue for development and governments are recognizing that. The Ghanaian government right. we're working with now, Vodafone has donated a 30 meter satellite dish, right. which we're converting for astronomy with the Ghanaian government. The Ghanaian government's very excited about that because they say science and technology are important for their development. I mean, you did say earlier on, I mean, it develops uh, a heightened level of scientific skill and awareness and could advance the growth of uh, industries like ICT by way of research capacity. Yep. South Africa right now just needs jobs. When you build a site, if we are granted the rights to build this SKA, in the areas around, what sort of cottage industries would emerge? Because we can't be talking about things that may happen in 10 years' time. Sure. We also need tangibles today. Sure. Well, with the Meerkat telescope, for instance, we've created jobs in construction, in service industries around the small towns in the Karoo. We're creating jobs in industry in the Western Cape primarily, but in other parts of the country which are providing services to us, building radio receivers, making printed circuit boards and so on. So we are creating jobs now. Mm -hmm. If the square kilometre array comes here, there'll be a lot more jobs in construction. There'll be a lot more jobs in maintenance, in operations, mm -hmm. in servicing, and then of course in, in building things like yeah. electronics.